Hello, and welcome once again to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Dials. I don't know if that's... I really should write out that script sometime, because I feel like I just make it up every time, and I make it up differently, like I have right now. This is a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign set in the world of Omatia, but this is campaign 2, set 1,000 years before the, the uh, elements of the previous campaign, otherwise known as The Great Confusion. Across the world, a strange gap of memory has occurred, and no one knows exactly why or what entirely it entails, although our sturdy crew here may have some idea, because they've got a bit of an insight. Who are my crew and who am I? I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. My crew, starting on my left, begins with Pat. Uh, my name is Pat, and I play Silas Marsh, uh, cultist and illusionist. Hello, my name is Marie, and uh, I am playing Annie, who is a uh, rogue. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half-orc cleric. Everybody's titles got so short today. Yeah. Uh, well, let <laughs> us... trying uh, to be concise. I'm kind <laughs> of us... holding in... A, I, I was trying not to burp on Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. The truth comes out. Uh, well, a little bit of a summary of what happened prior to this. Uh, for those who might be keeping track, as I am, uh, of the dates, it is uh, Water's Day, the 17th of Yuri. I've moved the, the timeline ahead a few more days after you return back from Eilthvater, but this is the actual beginning of the festival, and the circus is just open for its first day. What am I talking about? Well, let us, let us describe. But at the beginning of last session, there were a few small moments Silas, further bonding with the ring of Argenti Segax and the compass, learned more of their purpose to locate and open portals. Annie ordered a seamstress to produce a custom dress for the upcoming Barony Ball, paid for by her arm candy, Captain Verendel. Uh, Medric contacted uh, others in the hierarchy of Ignis to update them on the loss of the Everflame in Elthvater, and to request a new one. And Silas, asking his parents for the details of what happened on the day his wife was lost, uh, found out a little more, and also asked the mother for other answers, but received none. But it is a joyous time. The circus has come to Eilthwater. As a promised week of celebrations from the barony, the circus Maximus has arrived and has begun setting up shop in three primary locations— in addition, a fair of this size has attracted visitors from across the eastern chain, up and down the Illyrian Islands, and even people from as far away as the Olvip Sea, boosting trade and tourism in the recovering town. Much of the traveling entourage of the dragon-born Maximus Tonken Toroth has established itself in the sparse, standy grasslands on the northwestern edge of Eilthvater. There, dozens of wagons of all sizes were moored, and a couple of dozen tents of all sizes were also erected, nearly overnight. In the center was the massive main tent, which could probably seat about three-quarters of all the population of Eilthwater, but not the swelled size that Eilthwater has now. Nearer to the entrance is the substantial tent, also labeled the Theater Maximus. Off to one side of the cluster were tents for smaller attractions, and on the side opposite the bay, the makeshift village which serves the workers was built. A slate of events to occur over the next few days was mounted, including several plays and an opportunity for local performers to impress the crowd and win a portion of the money collected at the door. Down by the docks, among the steady turnover of trading ships bringing goods and passengers uh, in... Uh, sorry, and dropping off curious passengers, was a singular, unique vessel, clearly associated with the circus. Painted in shifting waves in unusual and garish colors, the ship floats in the billowing sails that seem less like cloth and more like clouds. Long before one could read the nameplates on the sides of the ship, the gentle and welcoming smell of recently cooked dough greeted the casual passerby. The good ship, Fresh Bread, took a prominent position on the dock off the northwestern end, with a wide, uninterrupted berth of Silver Moon Bay available to it, with purpose. Soon they announced the animal exhibits on display, an aquatic zoo of the Triton Relnerin, prince, princess of Dolranth, 
which initially involves do dolphins do dancing complicated patterns and the promise of further performances to come. Also a sign announced the Museum of Curiosities by Professor Dudok Bitterhorn from Demirak, opening soon. In the center of town, in the market square, merchants from all over have set up stalls in their, and their wares, as well as the carnival's own challenging games for all ages. Of these, three in particular stood out. A dunk tank, a balancing tower, and a feat of strength and accuracy. Medrick took up the hammer on the Ring One Bell challenge, but while he seemed to have the raw brawn, some sort of trick prevented him from winning, as a second bell was rung. Then Annie climbed the Tower of Destiny, a shifting platform three stories high, in which she needed to fend off an opponent and maintain her balance in order to win. And finally, the group spotted a familiar pair of faces by the dunk tank and sent Flip into the gooey mess inside, soon followed by Captain Verendel, although Remen failed to down the captain and angrily left, leaving Annie too tempted. Later, Medrick would seek out the large guardsman to feel out his anger and learned of the deep resentment he has for Verendel being promoted to Reeve in Remen's stead. After being thrown into the ugly mess and pulling in Annie when he had the chance, Verendel sought a private moment with her, convincing her to join him in a dip in the cool waters of the bay. Finally, one attraction in the market square opened, drawing the curious and the brave, the haunted house of mirrors, Eagerly and loudly fronted by a gnome with slicked-back hair, an enormous handlebar mustache, and a glittering coat of tails, who announced himself as Willoweth the Mysterious. He challenged the crowd to brave the mysteries of his terrifying attraction, to challenge themselves to see how long they could survive in this warped vision of reality. Naturally, Silas seemed to feel the need for mischief and after having left his son in the company of his parents, paid the entrance fee and stalked down the dark tunnel toward the haunted house. Before he embarked, the barker looked at him and said, Welcome to my house of horrors. Without looking back, Silas walked down a corridor, rounded a bend, crossed through a dark void, and vanished. So, a little bit of a, uh, a uh, retroactive continuity here to keep things a little bit simpler. Uh, Med, uh, Silas's parents, uh, which Yule and Sasha, I believe, are his parents, uh, were also at the fair and took charge of young Nikki uh, before the, uh, the, uh, the cultists decided to go and make mischief. Also returning it just a moment after that, uh, Annie and Medrick, uh, from your various uh, positions across town, have converged once more, seeing the familiar Nikki uh, and the almost familiar Sasha and Yule, who are, uh, as I said, Silas's parents, his parents being there. Nikki seems a little bit upset. He kind of wanted to go into the haunted attraction, but it was definitely something his grandparents were not keen on having happen. Uh, nonetheless, while he is pouting there, he is sort of just patiently waiting. The Barker calls out to Annie and Medrick, Ah, two more to join your friend inside. We might as well, I guess. Tends to get up to no good if he, he's left alone too long. If you find yourself brave enough, of course, and with ticket in hand. Ah. Right. Ticket. I'll go get tickets for uh, a small money. Hmm? I, I, I can give you a ticket for now okay. if you want still. Then I can get tickets for everybody else. Like okay. once we've expired these ones. Thank you muchly for your tickets. Now, a word of caution. Your friend went inside before I had much to say, but I will tell you this. Inside you will find such dangers and strife that could whiten your hair or cause you some concern. But, uh, but that sounds are, like a liability. If you are brave enough to make it to the very end, then, and he winks at you, some surprise may be awaiting you. A good one. Should you decide to stick with it. Thank you for your tickets, and welcome to my house of mirrors. And he 
gestures for you to walk down the same hallway, a canvas lined hallway set up in this rather small looking tent. It can't go much more than 15 feet to a side or maybe 30. There's something about the way the canvas itself seems to shift a little bit that makes it difficult to judge. As you proceed down, the walls themselves are lined with a silvery material. Does reflect, but nothing solid. Catches the light of, of uh, outside and bounces it around. Seems like there are fleeting images in all directions. You round the corner and see that a short hallway ends in a deep, dark void, beyond which nothing can be seen. The entrance awaits. Well, I guess we might as well get this done. Is that the darkness spell or something? Can I try to figure out if it's a darkness spell? Make an Arcana check. All right. Oh, no, because Arcana is not my good thing. Hey, 15. Yeah, 15. Um, it most definitely is magical of some kind. Um, darkness does not grow around corners like this seems to do. So, yes, most likely some sort of darkness smell, a spell. Um, you can't see the origin because I don't think you can see through magical darkness. Um, but as you're judging it, you'd say there's probably something on one wall or the other which is spreading this effect around. Okay. Well, it's probably some kind of illusion like Silas does. It can't be harmful. Let's go. Yup. Yep. I follow. Okay. You step into this darkness, now clearly like a magical cloud, and find yourself engulfed in it. For a moment, it's a bit disorienting. You can see nothing. The only thing you can feel is the, the ground beneath your feet, the solid stone of the market square. Stepping a few feet further, um, who's out front? Uh, I followed Medrick in. Okay. Yeah, I'll be out front. Medrick, I have a longer perception arms. check at disadvantage, okay. please. I'm assuming I'd be like feeling out the walls, so I don't like smack my head on 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 a overhang or something. Perception. Mm -hmm. I cannot perceive my perception score. Okay. <laughs> Ten. A disadvantage. Clock. Oh right. I'm not pretty the, sure I'm like hitting my head grade, on a beam but... or something. Oh, well, okay. 11! Still 10. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You are able to feel a solid wall in front of you, and you can run your hands across it. Uh, it feels like a wooden door, old and uh, a weathered, uh, and as you feel around, you feel a, a doorknob and are able to grasp it, pull it open. Do you do so? I'll tell Annie, there, there's a door here. Well... Silas? I'll call out to Silas, just in case he's around. The sound seems like it's swallowed up around you. Okay. Can I see anything at all, by the way, because of the, the eyes of Ignis? Mm. Not really. Uh, Annie, okay. you can vaguely make out Medric about a foot in front of you. Mm -hmm. Because the glow. Right, I'll knock on the door. If I don't hear anything within five seconds, I'll open it. Okay, it doesn't sound like anything. It sounds like a very uh, hollow, old door, not very sturdy. Then you uh, br uh, pull it back and open. Feel or is it a push? Uh, it's a pull. <laughs> 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 Roll an intelligence check. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I've been there. It's too embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> You open the door wide and feel a small, cold breeze sort of hit you in the face. Do you step forward? Yeah, I mean, there's nowhere else to go, right? If we're in the hallway? Pretty much. Medrick steps forward a foot, and Annie, you can no longer see him. Well, I'll continue walking forward. You hear the door slam behind you. All three of you feel a sensation, like falling. It's strange because you can still feel solid ground under your feet, but it's almost as though you're, you're falling or the orientation of your mind is shifting. You're not entirely sure what the effect is. Until suddenly, you pop down through a ceiling and land slowly, comfortably, 
on a tiled floor, tiled with squares, black and white, alternating pattern, a checkerboard pattern. The darkness still surrounds all three of you. Silas, you can hear the arrival only seconds behind you of other people. And as you look around, all three of you can make each other out. In the darkness of the room, there is a deep chuckle, and a light appears at the far end. Silas, you know you should have been able to see this. You can usually perceive through darkness, but this darkness is thicker, worn almost like a cloak. As lit from below by a lantern or a fact you're not entirely certain, you see hovering in this relatively small room, a large, round creature, nearly five feet wide, five feet around, spherical, with a wide, toothy grin splitting across its lower third, and a singular large eye in the center of its forehead. Weaving around its head, you can see numerous small tentacles, each ending with an eye. This hideous creature sits before you, a creature that some of you would have heard in stories, certainly Silas would have before. But the strangest part is the rather out-of-place-looking red and white polka dot tie just below <laughs> its bottom lip. Welcome, welcome, welcome guests. Good to see new, fresh meet in my domain once more. Pardon me while I scroll. I don't know why this is harder to find than it should be. Um, I am to be your torturer today. I'm sorry. Did I say that? I mean your tour guide today. I am Tao. Whoops, I just scrolled beyond it. I am Tauzek Riva. This is a very special place. Please introduce yourselves. And I would like Silas and Medrick to make wisdom saving throws, please. Oh, no. Okay. 22. Nice. Actually, if it's magic, 22. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> if it's magic 22 does not change the better of the two um, okay, so and 16 okay the floating orb turns to each of you um, how do you spell his name again T-A-O-Z-E-K what else uh, Riva R-E-E-V-A it's technically three names Tau Zek Riva okay hey guys Fancy meeting you here. I think we went through an actual portal. Yeah. Wait, what? It's not just an illusion? No. No, according to the ring, that was a portal. Is uh, Riva an illusion, or is he real and gonna, you know, try to eat us? Oh, I wouldn't try to eat you. I'd either succeed or fail. But this is truly a very special place, created just for you. No two groups see the same thing, and you may only ever visit it once. It's a once-in-a-death-time experience. Silas goes up and touches him to see if he's real. He backs up a bit, but then kind of acknowledges. The a big eye turns to watch you as do about four or five of the other stocks. The other few stocks are paying attention to Annie and Medrick. And indeed, he does seem to be flesh and blood and whatever else hovering there in the corner. If he's an illusion, he's a really good one. I'm a really good lot of things, but illusion I am not. Now, please, introduce yourselves. I'm Medrick, follower of Ignis. Annie. 
Um, make a an insight check, Annie. What was Natural the wisdom check? Oh yeah. What was that? Sorry. Natural what was that wisdom check? Oh. <laughs> so you made a wisdom check. There's no result that you notice. Okay. Uh, um, natural 20 for 21. Actually, there will be a notice that you, uh, thing you notice in a moment. Um, what you see, uh, Annie, is this sort of look of consternation cross across this single lidded eye as it sort of closes down and examines you from head to toe. Um, as you introduced yourself, Medrick, you felt a pressure in your mind. It was a very light pressure, but a probe, you might say. And you, he turns towards Silas. Hmm. I'd prefer not to give my name to something I don't know from another world. Ah, you're very smart. All three of you are most intriguing. This will be a delight to watch and a terror to experience. But... I've been told that I have to tell you that if at any point in time you feel that it is all too much for you, simply call for an exit. Know that it will void your chance at any prize, but it will keep your mind and body safe from further torture. And he kind of looks up to one side and kind of his mouth mutters a few syllables. Ah, well, I do see that there seems to be some sort of problem with the exit today, so it may not be entirely available. You'll be on your own then, masters of your own fate. Of uh, would Metric have seen Beholders before or heard of Beholders before? Um, you can make a history check. I will say that Silas and Annie can make a history check at advantage. Well, that's a two and a three. I got a six, so no, they, like uh, maybe it was in a story before, but it, it so sounds a seven like, total. Uh, it sounds as though for both Annie and Medrick, um, there are lots of monsters that haunt dreams. Um, and you're sure you've heard a story about something like this, but you're not really sure. Silas, you're familiar with a few songs that, that uh, talk of beholders. You know the general type of being this is. Um, this is an unusual presentation for one, uh, and it's a very, very dangerous creature. Um, mm -hmm. So you're quite certain of that. Uh, Silas so says, well, I might as well fit in with the... Uh the theme and uh he now looks like a cultist like long black robes and such okay i feel like that's he just pulls a hood up like <laughs> unless he's wearing his coat of many colors it's more of like yeah. well if he's wearing his uh his normal walking around stuff then it's just pants and a jacket okay yeah. and his armor underneath and a shield just because Excellent, excellent. Oh, you do seem like such interesting uh, rats to move through the maze. I'm sorry, did I say that part out loud? I don't mean to unnerve you. Oh, I'm lying, I certainly do. Of course, if you're feeling particularly reckless and perhaps a little insane, you could challenge me to a duel. I can assure you, you'll feel all the pain and won't accomplish what you've come here for anyway. I'll Which look at Silas and just gently shake my head. No, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Silas wasn't trying to. He's going through the, uh, he's going through the house. Now, one more gift for you before we move on. Wherever you are, whatever situation you find yourselves in, you may ask of me three questions, if you're stuck. But only three. You can ask about anything else as well, for that matter, but I might not be able to answer you. Is that clear? Is that three each, or three as a group? That's one, and that's one of your three. The answer is, you have three questions between the three of you. Two now. 
so tempted to say, so it's two left, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I don't. If it is all clear, which it probably isn't, but who says this is fair? You have the first choice in front of you. It may not make any difference, but it might. And on two of the walls, the we'll call the north-facing wall and the east-facing wall, the wall sort of dissolves a little bit, uh, leaving a tunnel behind. Um, if you are able to use uh, Roll20, um, you, I do have a map for this um, that you can be able to see. I'm hoping the map isn't entirely crucial, but I'm, I'm thinking it might be important. And for those of you at home, I'm going to switch to another view and allow you to follow along. Um, the eyeball <laughs> is just my POV character, by the way. That is not actually the, uh, <laughs> the beholder. That's this guy up here. Um, so there we go. There we go. I knew I could echo at some point. So the two choices are certain doom or the doom of uncertainty. Which do you wish to challenge yourself with? Which do you fear the most? I gotta say, you're really getting into this. This is a lot more than I thought it was going to be in here. Uh, which way do you want to go, Annie? I have no clue. Um, can I make a perception check to see what I hear at the end of each? Yep, so you can walk up to the doors and, and try to uh, make some perception. Uh, that is, I believe, 16 for the first one. Okay, Second. Sorry, what was the second? I didn't hear that. Eleven. Eleven? Okay. So the one off to the right, um, you kind of walk up to the door, and you can feel this, this in and out movement of air. Um, when it moves in, it kind of draws the heat out of the space. When it moves out, it, it smells of of dust and decay. It smells of, of staleness. It smells of, for lack of a better word, a dead field or a cave underground. For the other one, you walk up to it and there's no movement of air at all. There is what seems to be a small shimmer of light way down this tunnel. The tunnel seems to be not quite straight. It curves slightly back and forth, but just the hint of a light way down at the end that seems to shimmer just ever so slightly. Hmm. Well, any studying the doors, Silas is actually going to walk around uh, the uh, beholder guy and uh, study him. To, I hope you don't mind if I use your image later. You're very interesting looking. Uh, while the main eye is focused on Annie, the other uh, stalks kind of keep in, keep you in vision. Oh, yes. I've been known to scare many a person. It would please me to no great end to know that it continues even if I don't have to propagate it. Please, get my good side. And then ignore that and go for my bad side. And you can see as you move around him, it looks as though he does have numerous scars. Uh, uh, it looks as though at least one tentacle has been cut off. Um, the others you can see almost semi-independently are moving, almost as though they are discussing who should be the one to attack. But they don't seem to, not at the moment. His skin is a deep, deep red. It's almost hard to see the color in this dim room. And he most definitely is lit from below. An extra special effect to show off his very, very pointy teeth. So I'll say out loud, I'll, I'll say, uh, do we want to go to a windy, moldy field or in the direction of no wind and a strange light? Well, I, I'm, I'm in favor of no wind and a strange light. 
And I'll cast a light spell on my hammer so I can, so everybody else can see. Okay. And by sure. everybody else, I mean Annie. <laughs> Sounds fine to me. Excellent. Oh. It sounds as though you've chosen certain doom. Please, be my guest. So you move along that corridor? Yep. Okay. I, I'd shoot him a dirty look after I walk in, but I mean, he'd shoot me like nine or ten back, so I, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's a little unnerving to know that you have a, a considerable amount of his attention. And then when Silas is no longer circling him, all of the eyes are kind of focused. And you, you get this impression, too, like it's there's always at least three eyes that are watching you and they shift across your body almost as though they're correlating different elements of who you are. As you move down this corridor um, and again, it kind of twists left and right. The walls themselves are um, slightly slick or at least they look to be. When you touch them ever so slightly, you realize that it's embedded shards of mirror. Uh, all of it. There's no stone whatsoever, but this broken mirror, which is allowing the light to carry on a lot longer than you expect. Uh, and in fact, the light is further away. Um, there are, uh, There is before you a semi-transparent door of crystal that seems to shimmer with an internal light. Um, behind you, as you kind of glance back or see backwards, you realize there is no end of the, there is no tunnel behind you. It seems to be closing up silently as you move along. Who's out in front? The tunnel is narrow. I would be in the middle. I can go in front. Okay. Uh, that leaves Silas at the back. Shield out, hammer up. <laughs> um, as you. And my shield is out by now, because, like, I thought I was just expecting, like, some leisurely stroll through, like, a badly made mirror mansion, and it's like, oh, no, we're in a different universe. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, for your light, then, up front, um, your light seems to bounce a little bit off of the, the walls glinting ever so slightly, but it's mm -hmm. almost as though most of its light is being absorbed by the walls. Kind of like these are, are not mirror shards, but in fact, an infinite beyond everything else. And you see tiny little bits and pieces of your reflections in all of the walls. Every once in a while, out of the corner of your eye, you could swear that those reflections move independently of your own movements. Almost as though it is echoed in an entirely different possibility space or something bizarre like that. Um, if I try to stop and just stare directly at one, does it just reflect me uh, now? Or It seems to. You know, when you hold still and you look at it, um, you find yourself staring at it. Every once in a while, the glint of your, your own eye gets, gets reflected back. Sometimes the eye is not the pure light of Ignis. Sometimes it is pure dark somehow. Other times it seems to glow a different color, green and blue and red. And each of the others also see... Medric's eye appearing here and there in different parts along these walls, not connected to any reflection that you can see. That's trippy. Mm. I'll keep walking Neat. but slowly. They put a lot of work into this one. Um, and I'm going to uh, wait for just a second for uh, yeah. <laughs> one of our players who has probably a uh, a cooking... Uh, concern. I will uh, take this opportunity to reveal a section of the map that you guys will be coming to. I uh, hope you're enjoying this odd little sideshow. ADHD brain thought of thing that I can't forget. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. All right. There we go. Chose the wrong tool. So, Medric, you're going forward. This time you see in front of you, finally, farther down the tunnel than you had expected, this crystalline door right in front of you. Okay. Is the map you... supposed to have updated? or? Nope. Okay. This is still description. I'm, I'm doing the updates myself manually here. Just gotcha. Um, so... 
as you reach out for the door, it seems to be much like what you envisioned the other door had been, except this time entirely made of what looks like shattered crystal. You reach out for the doorknob. Yeah, unless it's made of shattered crystal, because that would be sharp and cut my hand. Is it a regular doorknob? You, you, it looks like it. Uh, and you reach out towards the doorknob, and your yep. hand goes right through it. Does my entire body go right through it afterwards, too? Or <laughs> guess I see I disappeared from the map. <laughs> uh, everybody did as I slowly migrate things up the side of the map here. There's no I'm easy still way there. To do this. <laughs> There's no easy way to do this, unfortunately. Yeah, I can still see me, but uh, that's it. All right. This is the, unfortunately, the cumbersome part of this particular thing. Do you step forward? I'll put my hand on the door to see if maybe the door can also be, like, walked through or touched through. Make a dexterity saving throw. No, that one is full of glass shreds, isn't it? Two. You go to put your hand on the door to see what it is, and your hand goes right through it, as do you, realizing it is the edge of an abyss. Medric falls well, through the door and vanishes. Well, it's the only way forward, I guess. <laughs> do the rest of you follow? I take a step forward. Okay. Yeah. Now now realizing the door to be somewhat insubstantial, you're you're not surprised, not that you ever are, by the sudden uh, uh, drop on the other side. But as you pass through, it feels as though you are falling upward. And Medric, you also notice the same sort of thing. Um, does Silas follow? Yep. Yeah, he'll, uh, he'll tap his staff on the ground as he goes. Okay. Just ahead of him. Um, as you fall and fall upward it's strange because you're not falling through open air but instead it's almost as though you're falling and passing through layers upon layers of dirt uh, within this dirt you see occasional rocks small insects moving and then each of you pass by a scene of skeletons and of dwarves and halflings all grasping at shiny stones, but all locked in this embrace of pain and anger, all fighting, caught in their last moments, buried in rock and dirt. At another point, large worms cross across your path, crawling through, t through dirt, looking at treasure chests buried deep below. And finally, circling around you from beneath and then above and then around and around, as if curious, the half-flesh of a buried dragon, so large that it almost circles you entirely, making one wrap around. It twists and moves and regards you. You can see half of its skeleton flensed away and the other angrily and hungrily hanging on to the bones to stay alive with one empty socket and one with a large eye it regards you. And then you pass upward through a solid stone floor, much like what you had faced before, again tiled in black and white. If you move to the top of the map, you should be able to see your icons there and this other strange room with labels of one, two, and three, and I'll tell you what those are in a moment. Um, within this room you see four trellised off small, well, I guess you would call them cells. In the middle of the room, there are three pedestals, each with a colored stone on top, one purple, one orange, and one green. Behind the trellises, you see, in the position number one, a very familiar uh, halfling who looks a little bit concerned a little bit annoyed and certainly surprised to see the three of you. It is Dr. Marigold. Oh, well, this certainly seems like a good surprise, finally. In the position number two, someone that in particular Medrick recognizes, but all three of you know this person. 
Standing there, looking very annoyed and confused, is Melora Cartwright. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm certainly hoping that you do. And in position number three, you see a half-orc. Uh, each of you can make a history check, and uh, Silas, you make it with advantage. <laughs> I got a zero because I got a one and I got a minus one to history. Oh dear. That's a half orc. I'm pretty sure. Um, or the tusks it, in illusion. Or... It definitely seems like a half orc. You're dressed in a uh, somewhat grimy, torn uh, tunic uh, and pants. You can see a, 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 a grimy looking, uh, probably was white, now more like a an amber colored uh, uh, towel over one uh, one shoulder. What did Annie get? 23. 23. Um, Annie and, uh, and Silas, both you both recognize this person. Um, in particular for Silas, it is because you've been in town for such a long time, and you've been a, made a habit of, of traveling from different pub to pub to see where the performances are best at and to find uh, information. For you, Annie, uh, you've scoped out the town for long enough, and part of that, and partly because you've also served uh, to some degree with the guard, although not necessarily in the most public of roles, both of you recognize the half-orc bartender of the Amber Stream called Einak. And he just looks annoyed. Uh, he's actually holding uh, a, a, a uh, earthenware mug in one hand, uh, almost as though he had been cleaning it. And he just looks up. What the hell is all this, then? Did Can guys... I make an insight check to see if their confusion is real or if it's just... I'm trying to see if, if like they're really there or is it just people from our brains, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can see that, that Annie probably would be able to... To make that, uh, I will say that um, with uh, Doctor Marigold, you'll make it with advantage. You make it straight with Melora, and you make it disadvantage for Idak. Uh, advantage for Marigold is eleven. Uh, sixteen and uh, four. Okay, Idak, you've never really spoken to all that much. He just looks annoyed, but he always seemed to look annoyed most of the times you were in. The Amber Stream is not the best of bars. Um, it's not so much named after the beer. Um, for Melora, um, you didn't have a chance to talk with her all that much on the road, but she does seem to be genuinely annoyed uh, and a little bit concerned, but there is a small flicker of recognition of Medric, almost a bit of hope, maybe. And for Dr. Marigold, um, he seems weirdly cheerful, uh, almost as though, yes, this is a bother and a pain, but also it's not that bad and it's curious. And he's always been curious about things. Did you all get teleported here or something, or did you enter the mansion and then fail, and now you're stuck here? I'll ask, like, in general to all of them. I just sort of grunts and shrugs. Uh, Melora said, I was sleeping. I don't remember entering any house or mansion. And uh, Dr. Marigold, I was mixing something, and I'm really hoping it's not going to boil over. Hmm. Interesting. Are you going to get I'll... us out of here? Says Melora. Did you just like wake up in here or did you see how the locks work? Are there any guards that'll come out if we try to let you out? I just got here, so I don't have no idea what you're talking about, but all I can presume it has something to do with those stones. I'll try opening the door to Melora's cell, like just to see. Okay. I'm assuming it's locked. Um, well, it's it's a very heavy portcullis. 
uh, and seems to be embedded into the ground, as in it's closed and they're, they're deep uh, rods into the ground. Okay. Hmm. Is there anything like on the door frame that'll give us a hint, basically? <laughs> I think the hint was it has to do with the, the gems on the tables, which is um, what I, I was going to take a look at. Okay. Um, but the one is blue, the two is red, and the three is green, though. Uh, well, don't don't pay attention to those colors. Those are just okay. my markers because I don't have uh, icons for each of those people. I do have one for for Melora somewhere. I do have one for Doctor uh, Miracle somewhere, but I I just didn't bother taking the time to do that. No worries. Um, the uh, as you look around the door, uh, Medric, into this, um, this looks like a very well fashioned cell. Um, this looks like it was made to be very very sturdy. Um, you can see that the the metal used in the bars itself is quite uh, hard. You give it a little little knock, and you can hear just how solid it is. Uh, even testing it a little bit, it does not seem to budge. Um, these are meant to hold probably very dangerous prisoners. Um, Annie, you take a look at the stones. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the one on the left is purple. Um, it seems to be some sort of polished crystal. Um, looks as though it was it was a worked crystal. Uh, it seems to have striations in it as well. Um, that seem to to run uh, from the the bottom all the way top, like little imperfections on the inside. Um, I'll give you that one for free. Does anybody else want to take a look at either one of the others? Yeah, I'll look at the stone. I'll look at the orange stone okay. and the pillar that it's sitting on, or pedestal it's sitting on. Uh, the pedestal seems like it just works stone. Nothing pretty fancy about it. It's it's uh, it's got a, a couple of different uh, sort of um, what are they called curls at either side, making it slightly fancy. But the central pillar itself is basically almost straight up and down. The pillar is about um, three feet high. Uh, and on top of it sits the uh, uh, a sort of orangish or amber stone uh, that seems to be uh, a, a, well, it is an actual amber stone. Um, and it has a, a sort of whitish flex or whitish streaks that run across it. It seems to be a little bit smaller than palm sized. Okay. Uh, Silas is going to attempt to reach through the uh, portcullis and uh, ask uh, Dr. Uh, not Margarita Vale. Um, <laughs> Marigold? Marigold. Uh, to uh, shake his hand. He wants to make sure he's actually there. Okay. Um, you stick your hand through the, the bars, no, not without any problem. Uh, Marigold kind of trundles forward. And as he approaches your hand, just before he can actually touch, there's a loud, loud sparking sound, almost as though uh, like static electricity, but strong enough for him that it throws him to the back of his cell. Uh, and he kind of yets, lets out a yelp. Oh, oh, that, that, that was unpleasant. That's interesting. I wonder how that's achieved. You know, there are several spells I've heard of that could do such a thing, and he seems lost in thought for a moment. Okay, I make an investigation roll as I try to see if it's an illusion. Okay. Hey! Um, 23! Nice. nice. As a master of illusions, or at least pretty darn good at them, uh, you're familiar with some of the telltale signs, things like things not quite lining up. Uh, and you run through a sort of series of tests, things like grabbing them well physically they seem to be there they seem to be quite hefty um you heave on it doesn't seem to make any difference give it a bit of a knock it has sound and you know how difficult it is to achieve that sort of secondary illusion um if you lean a little bit closer um and kind of tip your tongue to it you taste a little bit of rust and oil on the surface of the bars uh it seems to be genuine they are actually what? there uh, well, it's more that uh, um, Dr. Marigold is ah. he an illusion. And from looking at him, uh, he seems to be substantial. 
quite lost in his own thoughts at the moment. You can see where his hand reached out to yours. There is a bit of a blackening of his fingers, as though he was just shocked by a spark. And did the spark seem to come from my hand or from the bars or from nowhere? It seemed to almost come from nowhere. It, it, it felt almost as though, or, or the partial uh, view of it is almost like a static electric, electric shock. But it, you didn't feel it come from you, even though that seems to be where it must have come from for that direction. Okay. Uh, so I say, well, in my professional opinion, these are not illusions. Hmm. Uh, the size of the purple rock, is it the same as the orange one? A little smaller than palm-sized? Um, it's a little smaller than palm-sized around, but it's taller. Uh, it probably is about a palm's height uh, up, um, whereas the other one is more like a palm, uh, the, the central part of the palm, and flat and round. This one is also kind of spiked, spiky upward crystals, whereas the other one is smooth on the surface with uh, little, little white uh, uh, streaks in it. Hmm. And was there anything that looked like a receptacle in the portcullis that I was looking at? Not that you could see, no. Okay. I'll go to the last cell, the one that has, that, that has nobody in it. Mm -hmm. Is that locked too? Or? Uh, it has a, a, a similar um, portcullis that's closed. Uh, as you look at it, though, the, it looks as though the, the the back of this particular cell has a blanket of darkness across it. It seems and feels a lot like the darkness you'd seen before. Okay, so it's probably the exit. Maybe. Who knows? Okay, Silas will check out the green stone, then. Okay. Uh, the green stone appears to be somewhat like an emerald, but as you look closer to it, um, it is sort of uh, oblong uh, and squat, um, strange shape for an emerald. Uh, and as you look into it, you can see that there seem to be patterns of little silver flecks inside the emerald that seem to spiral around internally. Like they're moving or just... No, not, not, not moving, just permanently stuck that way. What was the purple one like again? It was purple and uh, there was some kind of markings on it. It, it was like... worked, worked crystals with striations from the bottom to the top. Yeah, like little internal cracks on the internal sides okay. of, or internal sections of the of the crystal. I said and it was spiky and times. pointy. Uh, and yes, it was sort of oblong, stood upright and uh, point, pointed. Well, I'll pick up the green stone and see if it does anything. Okay. You heave the, the, the green stone. It seems to be set into a just a slight depression on the top of the pedestal. You get the impression that it wouldn't roll off on its own. And you heft the green stone, and nothing appears to happen. I replace the orange stone with the green stone. Okay. You lift the orange stone. Uh, and all of you, uh, particularly starting with uh, Annie, however, uh, mm -hmm. notice a, a, an emergence out of the left-hand wall. Uh, sorry, out of the right-hand wall. Um, as it looks as though figures start moving, ghostly figures emerge from the wall. They look as though they are half-formed humanoid beings, but also float and flow as if they are underwater. Um, they seem to, to move and move forward with uh, outstretched hands. And that was just from picking it up? I was picking up the orange one. And okay. they proceed to move further forward. You might want to put yourself where you are. I take I a step. Be right there. Yeah. I take a step back. Same. We seem to be progressing further and further down. I put the green stone down in its place. Okay. Um, it does not seem to do anything. Okay. Make a... Uh, let me see here. Make a dexterity saving throw. 
No, sorry. Uh, nope, dexterity saving throw. Sorry. Natural 20. 21 hey. total. Uh, nice. Uh, you manage to, to duck out of the way as they streak on by you. Uh, it is almost as though they are, are reaching out to grasp you as you stand there. Uh, and then you kind of deftly stand, step to one side. And then they move on. Shield up and I take a swing at it with a hammer. Okay. It goes right through them. No effect. Damn it. Make a dexterity saving throw. Three. It's one of those dice days. <laughs> Uh, you uh, find yourself uh, uh, colliding with one of them as you take a swing towards it, and you can feel its essence kind of tugging at yours in a painful way. Uh, you lose one hit point. Okay. It proceeds on. Um, um, may I, like, dodge or something to, like, make myself uh, splat against the wall because they seem to be going in a straight line? Uh, they are moving in a straight line, or seem to be, but they are moving out to each side. They have a, re a reach of 10 feet. Uh, and you can cool. see the arms and, and wisp kind of race, uh, racing towards you. You can try to take an active thing before they get to you, but um, it's up to you. Hmm. Could I, like, ready, like, basically take the dodge action to, like, give myself advantage on the, the save? Sure. Like ready I'll myself allow. to. I'll allow that. That makes sense. Yeah. As you get yourself ready and they pass by you again, reaching out towards you, make your dexterity saving throw with advantage. Doesn't normally apply that way, but I like that. Yeah. Basically, I see it coming. Uh, that's a dirty one. Yep, no problem. Passes on by you, doesn't even look back, you notice, as they pass uh, uh, forward and forward and forward until finally they vanish through the left hand wall. That looks terrifying. What are those things? I thought I recognized one of them. I Can you get me know. out of here? I don't want to be here anymore, says I not. Oh, neither do we. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Just give us a bit of time. And I'll pick up the purple crystal, see what happens. Okay. You pick up the purple crystal. And um, suddenly from behind all three of the, the prisoners... Um, you hear them all exclaim as something uh, emerges from the back wall behind them. And in fact, you see three more of these things move through. They, are, they have no way to get out of the way. And you see them all kind of stagger a little bit as these creatures move through them and uh, attempt to, to claw at them. All three of them seem to be affected by it. it moves I'll put it back down. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Do they disappear? Nope. Medric, make a uh, dexterity saving throw. Sorry, constitution saving throw. 15? Right. Wait, no, con, con is higher. Where is it? Okay. So just add a plus due to that 15, so 17. Okay. Yep, no problem. Um, you feel it tugging again at your soul, but this time it feels more internal than before. As they move forward... Silas. Just trying to find where my character sheet went to. There you <laughs> go. And it is, again, a constitution saving throw. Uh, it would be magical in effect if that makes a difference in this case. I don't think it does. Natural 20. Um, do you have advantage? If it's magical, yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if that worked. Uh, yes, you, you also feel the sort of siphoning effect of your, of your very essence, uh, but are able to withhold it um, for yourself. Um, uh, and um, it's, not, it's not a physical connection this time, so the dodging won't necessarily work, or you could do it, but it wouldn't have any effect. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, seeing them come towards me, though, can I move here? Uh, yeah, you can dash. So you can cool. drift off. And once more, they pass down and through the walls. I like skid out of the way. Okay. Well, Silas is going to go put the orange one back where the green one used to be. Okay. You set it down, and it's green before you. And the orange one is back in its place. 
Hmm. But the uh, in the middle, when I put the green one down there, it was still green until I tried to put the orange over here. Um, it, you set it down, you turned away, you went to move back, and as soon as you set, set down the third stone, all of them returned to their normal spaces. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Can I investigate, like, if there's a place on the walls that we're supposed to put them or something? Okay. You can spend some time looking around. You can make a, an investigation check. Um, investigation is 12. 12? No, sorry. Sorry, 11. Dyslexic 11. moment. <laughs> investigation kind of... intimidation same thing right <laughs> well, to some things i suppose uh they both might, might both might get you the right information in certain cases depending who you're dealing with i suppose uh in this case however as you kind of wander around and looking at the walls the only thing that's kind of weird about this particular space is that there is no change in the walls they are just a simple uh, uh constructed stone uh but not uh nothing no features no no doors no windows no there's a few pock marks here and there but nothing that seems to be large enough for any of these crystals hmm. Interesting. what happens if we lift the purple one and the orange one at the same time or if we lift them all at the same time i i don't like that idea <laughs> But we can try if you really want to. I'll check on the uh, people in the cells. Are they okay? Did they lose more than one hit point? Um, they look rattled. Um, Einak in particular is sort of like, you notice he's, he's taken his towel now and is cleaning out this, this mug that he's been carrying. For no reason he's cleaning this out, but you get the impression it's almost like a, an instinctual or, or nervous reaction. It's something he knows to do, but he looks a bit shaken. Uh, Melora just looks increasingly angry. Uh, but you can tell a little bit of of, uh, of sort of lines under the eyes, uh, and there's a bit of concern there. And Dr. Marigold is lost in his thoughts again, kind of speculating on things. Uh, but again, with the blackened finger still there and the slightly shabbier look than a moment ago, uh, he was clearly affected by that. Hey, Marigold. Silas is going to quickly pick up the green one, take it to the purple one and exchange them, and then try to bring the purple one back. Okay. You pick up the green one. Nothing mm -hmm. happens. Uh, you pick up the purple one, and um, from above once more, you see them start to emerge from behind the three of them and prog progress forward. Uh, this time, okay. all three of them are attempting to get out of the way, but with the span that they have, there's there's nowhere to get from in those small little rooms. And yeah, proceed and Silas so quickly tries to get back and drop the purple one at the first point. Okay. Does not seem to have an effect. Uh, Medric, constitution saving throw. No, wrong window. Okay, here we go. 17. Okay. You hold on to your very essence. You let the internal fires burn. Um, 11. 11, uh, you suffer one level of exhaustion. Okay. And Annie? Uh, oh, that, that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, con save is uh, 17. Um, sorry, you do not suffer the level of exhaustion. You did manage to make it just barely. I was looking at something else. Oh, with the 11? Yes. Okay. Um, and what was your total, uh, Annie? 17. 17, no problem. Um, you once once more are able to kind of hold on to the very your very being. So what happens when I drop the purple back in the green spot? Um, they seem to instantly shift positions and back to the starting position once more. Hmm. Are you guys okay? I'll ask. Well, everybody, basically. Um, Inok is kind of sitting down. He looks kind of tired. Uh, Melora looks uh, more tired than before, but she's still standing tall and proud and annoyed. I'd rather not have that happen again, if you can avoid it. And Marigold seems to be sleeping. 
peacefully, but sleeping. I think it's a, uh, I think it's a switching them around puzzle. But they keep switching back. Uh, yeah, I think that means we had the wrong combination. It's resetting back to its start point. Now there's three pedestals, which means there's six different combinations, including the starting one, which obviously is not correct. Uh, we've gone through three of them so far. So we could try switching the purple and the orange. Yeah. I wonder, yeah. Silas will try picking up the orange one just to see what it does when only the orange is picked up. No, we, okay. we tried that earlier. No, I had the green up at that time. Okay, you pick up the orange uh, one, and from the left-hand wall emerge these uh, these creatures hmm. moving and sweeping through the area. Uh, Medric, dexterity saving throw. Silas is going to try and switch Two. quickly, but... You suffer one hit point loss as it passes through you and seems to take a bit of you with it. Um, technically, I think Silas is over by the the other one. No, yes, no, he, no, he ran he, towards. I, he dashed the... forward to try to change the uh, exchange the orange and purple ones. Okay, uh, he got a seven, so he, he loses got a seven, the point. So one hit point. Um, and you are trying to? Did you say exchange? Yeah, like he picked up the orange one. He's then picking up the purple one and putting the orange one down to see if he can switch okay. them. The moment you pick up the the uh, purple one, you see emerging from the bottom uh, these creatures. Um, uh, let's see. So first, I got to do a little zoom in here so I can move the right ones at the right time here. I wish there was a grouping function. There's no grouping function. <laughs> of mm. 20. It would make these a lot easier to manage. Um, right. uh, let's see. That one. And that one. And that one. Uh, they move forward one. Uh, that one. That one. And that one. They move up one. Uh, Annie, you have to make a constitution saving throw. And dexterity, too. <laughs> yep. Got to make them both. Uh, that is a 13 for the con. Okay. Um, yep, you're able to hold on to your essence. You can feel it starting to drain, and in fact, at this point, you're feeling this this weird sort of closed in feeling as these things are passing all around you. And you start to realize too, that it's not as much with these ones that are, are moving up and down. Um, they aren't trying to reach out to you. It seems almost to be the, the connection between them, which is causing the, the concern. Uh, and then I will move these guys over and I'll have you make a dexterity saving throw. And for Silas, a, um, a con Natural 20. Hey, nice. Rolling all the twenties today. Uh, Seventeen. Despite the 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 tiredness that you momentarily feel, it passes through you, uh, and once in again with uh, Annie, it also uh, you seem to just duck out of the way as they move through. Uh, I also have to put you to the back so I can actually get at my friends as they move through. All right, and now, baboom. Uh, as the two groups collide. Uh, whoops. Um, you all watch as the ones in the upper right-hand corner, which collide, uh, annihilate one another and disappear. Uh, Medric, uh -huh. I need a constitution saving throw. Yep. Oops. Ah, wrong thing. 11. Okay. You're able to hold on at the moment for uh, the the energy, your life force. Um, however, and I'm just going to move them off the map because that's where they'll end up eventually. Uh, you do see the one of them uh, hit uh, Dr. Marigold, the sleeping Dr. Marigold, so he's not even able to defend himself. And Melora seems to hold fast, but she yawns as the thing passes through her. I don't think I have... 
Not much left. We know how it works now. Yeah, so it's like, aha. All right. And when you look back again, the crystals have returned to their normal positions. Okay, so this is a timing puzzle. Um... Somebody with better medical skills should look at Melora and Dr. Marigold. I can't do I anything. It'll just spark like when you touch them. Uh, no, I mean, just check them out. See which one. If, see if you can find out which one seems more exhausted. I mean, I know he's asleep, so maybe that won't work, but... Um, yeah, I'll give them a look, both of them. Melora, how how do you feel? Honestly, like I've been on the road for three or four days on a stretch and haven't had a good night's sleep since. Uh, Silas looks over at Annie and says, I think, I mean, we just saw we have to make them collide, so it's a timing thing. Yep. But... I think we should get rid of the one going up and down uh, through uh, Dr. Marigold's one. He might be more affected. I don't know if he can take a couple of a couple more. Of yeah. Those. I'll have a look at Dr. Marigold. How is he? Okay. Uh, make a medicine check. I believe that's plus five. It is. Yeah, 20. Nice. nice. As you look through the bars, at, at first, uh, Dr. Marigold, very obviously sleeping. But as you look a little bit closer, you can see that he's very, very deeply sleeping. Like, not just a casual rest as he was he had a moment ago, but it seems almost as though he's far deep in sleep. Um, the further one slips into this, sometimes you never awaken from it again. Oof. Yeah, Marigold is in bad shape. We should... Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and by the way, the, the reason that I'm doing their entire movement through this is that it is happening as a movement. Mm -hmm. It's all happening basically at once. Um, I say if uh, Annie and I can time it right, um, I think the sideways ones are going to come from the right. And if we let those go through, like if you pick up the orange one and those start coming through, then when they're just about to get under there, I'll pull the purple one. Well, when you picked up the orange one, they came from the left. But the first time we pulled the orange one came oh. from the right. I think they're going back and forth. Yeah, and what's when, confusing when here is uh, the first time, the first two times we pulled the purple one, they both came from the top, but the third time they came from the bottom. Should it, like, should it be we, top and then bottom, or? Well, we've only, we've actually only pulled uh, each of them uh, twice. Uh, Medrick pulled the orange ones the first time, and they came from the right, and then uh, we pulled the purple one, and they came from the top. Then the second time. I pulled the orange one and they came from the left and the purple one and they came from the bottom. So I, th I think they're just going back and forth and up and down. Yeah, that's what I think too, but I could have sworn no, like they no, came down no, from they the top didn't. twice. They, they, it was top right, top right, and then this last one, it was left bottom. We've only done the each we've of them. We've done three. Twice. Yeah, we, we, we've had three different combinations. We had purple, green, orange which was top right, then green, orange, purple, mm. it was top right, and then orange, purple, green was bottom left. Yeah. Or maybe whether the green crystal is or isn't on the pedestal determines the, uh, the site they come from. Well, Is that was the only way, difference if last we, time. Yeah, if we that, that the, would make sense. Yeah, if we pull the orange crystal and have someone at the purple crystal ready to pull it, then we just have to time it. 
whichever direction they're going in. Um, I think we have to pull the orange one first in case it starts far away. Um, and then we can just bring the other ones either up or down. They're about the same distance either way. Uh, the, the last time, was the green crystal still on the pedestal? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if we, if I pick up the orange one, and, uh, sorry, my brain is mathing. I pick up the mm -hmm. orange one, they come here, they start there, they take a step, Met, uh, Silas picks up the purple one, and then yeah. they'll both step at the same time. Hopefully. Because uh, they'll go one, two... They will be coming from the bottom, though, if nobody two. picks up the green crystal. Yes. Hmm. They should. Because the yeah. green the green crystal doesn't do anything. Yeah. So it yeah, it, 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 it makes sense that it, it is what changes which side they're coming from. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that's a the orange crystal first to get them coming from this side, then the green crystal, and then all the purple one. So they come. No, not not, the not the green crystal. We don't touch the green crystal. Yeah. Don't touch I, thought it with, I thought without the green crystal, they come from the top. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to come from the bottom. We want no matter them what to happens. come from the bottom. Yeah, I think we need the green crystal pulled up to get the, no. them to come It doesn't the matter. As soon as they hit each no. other, they, they disappear. No, 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 no. So the last, sec the last way that we had it was uh, orange, purple, green. The green was still where it goes. Because you switched the orange and the purple. We didn't touch the green mm. at all. I have them yeah, written yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Yeah. I have okay. them written down with the results, guys. <laughs> okay. So you pull the orange and I pull the purple. Yeah. So I'll pull the orange and then the first step that they take, you pull the purple and then they should meet on yeah. this square there is basically. Yeah. Uh, he does look right. We've just got to make sure we get this right because I think we'll kill them if we don't. Yes. So uh, he is ready. Okay. Uh, I will say that for whatever reason, your video has frozen, but thankfully I can still hear you and hopefully you can still hear and, and, uh, and hear me. You don't mm. have to see me, uh, but hopefully those at home can follow along. It's yep. just on your screen that the video is frozen. Yeah. Good. Good. So. Okay. So what are we doing here? Okay. So I'm going to pick up the orange stone and okay. then, uh, the when the things take a step in we're going to pull the purple stone so that when they'll step out like so when they show up they show up on this square right yeah uh, we're gonna yeah we're gonna pull the purple ones that they meet and uh, yeah. uh, one pair okay. of them uh, this does happen very very quickly so yep. uh, essentially for you pulling the purple stone uh it'll be a reaction and then you can make a uh um I think sleight of hand would be an appropriate one to do this quickly and time. Sure. Enough. Okay. Do you want me to do it then to, to pull the purple uh, he, one? He's actually trained in sleight of hand. So he's pretty. He's... And, uh, I have you, you got the Silas. Sleight of hand. Sorry? I'll go, no, I'll I, go to Silas. Never mind. And, uh, sorry. I have expertise in stealth. I was looking at the wrong one. But yeah. <laughs> I'll go to Silas and put my hand on his shoulder. You got this, man. And give him guidance. Okay. Cool. Sure. Okay. That would work. Okay, uh, get ready, and uh, any might want to be along the top just to avoid the the other ones. Thingy yeah, ones. Uh, I will go there. Yeah, I'm going here. I think I'm still within reach of it, but that's fine. Okay, let's do this. So Annie is going to count, and then basically she she wants Silas to take it like what once the the other ones appear basically, and they take a step. Mm -hmm. Pull the other one. Cool. So three, two, one. <sighs> pull. Okay, so you pull the orange stone. And as expected, coming from the left, you do see them start to move along. Now, okay. make your sleight of hand check to pull the purple stone at the right time. Hey. And I get a d4 on top of that. All right. Uh, so another two, so I get a 19. 19, excellent. And just as you pull that stone, this one starts to move into that right direction. And sure enough, 
they collide, and these bottom two are now annihilated with each other. I'll yell, Uh, Melora, get out of the way! Oops. And then I'm moving over here. (laughs) And then these two start to move. i got to make sure I remember which one is which. Um, You're still within range of that one, Silas, so I'll still need a dexterity saving throw. Sure. Seven. Take one point, one hit point. Um, this one moves forward, and this one moves up. Uh, Medric, I will need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Nineteen. Nice. Uh, you do not find yourself uh, passing out. I'll need a dexterity can, saving throw from you as well, though. Can right. I try something wacky? Sure. Sure. Can I run here and try to hit it with vice? Uh, I'll take one point of damage. <laughs> uh, to hit the the constitution one going up. You certainly can. Uh, make a make a, a swing. A swing. I want to see if radiant damage does anything. Mm-hmm. Basically. Math. Twelve plus seven is. It is pretty wide. It should be hittable. As you stab forward into it, um, you kind of lean into its aura. I will need a Constitution check from you. Yep. However, you make it at advantage. Hey. As you see, its its essence sort of fray and twist in response to the the powerful weapon. Dirty twenty. No problem. Um, you see Melora also standing as it passes through, kind of gritting her teeth. And with uh, I told her to get out of the way. Would she have an advantage on her save? There's nowhere to go in those spaces, oh. unfortunately. It's small Correct. enough. Uh, however, it does seem that with the extra wispy nature that it has uh, been disrupted, and uh, she does seem to hold fast. And then we'll just move these off to the sides where they end up. Wacky idea. Okay. Well, and a 19 for the save for the dex one as well. Mm. Or yeah, I got a 2 for my dex. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's right. You would have been in the range for that one, too. But a 19 is plenty. I got a 2 for my dex save, so I just gave myself one damage. That's that's exactly it. Well, okay. we do the same thing again, uh, but uh, time it so that uh, they meet under here. Okay. Um, where this one's a harder roll, because we're trying to time, like, a further, um, do, would we want me to do the purple one? That way, Silas can give me Bardic Inspiration as well as Guidance, to make sure. Sure. It's the last inspiration I've got, but yeah, you can have it. Yeah. You got this, Annie. You, you've, Ooh, been, you've been rooting for her all day, actually, because you were rooting for her in the uh, other <laughs> mm-hmm. So, because that way we, we just have the best chance of not killing Melora. Yep. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. It's going to make that date she, she a lot wouldn't, harder she, to she attend. Would, she wouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that was players saying things. Well, Melora um, would, be, would be saying, I really don't want to die here. Yep. Okay. I've got you a won't. date. Guidance her up, Annie. Uh, cool. Guidance her up, Medric. I did. Okay. Earlier. Then uh, Silas will count down, and then uh, on three, pull up the orange stone. Okay. Um, and it, the creature appears from the left-hand wall and begins to tick along. Um, Annie, I'll need a dexterity saving throw. Natural 20. Nice. So 26. Wow. <laughs> the, the, this diamond. It's yeah, rolled both of them. It's doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about for Medric? What do you, oh, great. Oh, for the save, you mean? Things coming Actually, from the on, bottom? Hang on just a second. So, yeah, if you want this yeah. to time properly, I will need the sleight of hand roll from uh, Annie. As it that, is occupying that space at the time, this will be a disadvantage. I thought that was what she rolled. Nope, that was yeah. the uh, dexterity saving throw. Ah, cool. Can I 
weird another weird use of abilities. Could I use steady aim? Uh, that's no, because it only applies no. to attack rolls, I believe. It doesn't apply yeah. to skill rolls. It's a good yep. thought, though. So, oh, good rolls. Uh, you said disadvantage, right? That's right. That was better. Uh, so that's 16, <laughs> 19, 23, plus six for sleight of hand, I believe. So 29. That's the lower of the two rolls? Wow. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've rolled a 16 and a 17 on the die. <laughs> Everybody's getting like nonstop man 20s. <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, but you are able to, to uh, heave up the stone, and you do see the thing starting to move forward as both of them progress forward. I will need a dexterity saving throw from Medric as it moves through. 16. Well, Nate, you 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 uh, you see you're you're used to its patterns now and start to to feel and understand. And as the two of them right in front of Medric collide with one another, they seem to and and Medric with this very close view, uh, it is almost as though the two become one, like they were halves of the same soul separated for eternity. And you have set them to rest. Cool. The room shudders and shakes. It wakes Dr. Marigold up, although he only kind of opens a half eye and, and looks around. Oh, what, what, did I miss something? The room begins to turn and rolls forward towards the, uh, the enclosures. Uh, each of you make a dexterity saving throw. Thirteen. Thirteen. Ten. Um, yep, each of you make that roll. Uh, I just realized I said it's a 10. Uh, as you all kind of slide down the wall and realize the entire room is turning over towards uh, that wall. Uh, Medric, you can see now as you're kind of standing on top of this grate, uh, as a darkness opens up behind Melora, and she kind of lurches backward and falls through the darkness which vanishes as soon as she's traveled through. Uh, Silas, you see the same thing for uh, Anak. And Annie, you can see and you actually hear more Dr. Marigold go, oh my, this seems whoop, and, he's, and he vanishes. The room turns once more. So now it essentially is turned on its edge at 90 degrees. But all of you are in a comfortable enough position. You're not having to worry about falling too far and can easily walk around. And when the room is entirely inverted, the three crystals drop to now what is the floor, which was the ceiling, and you feel all of the uh, portcullises, heavy as they are, slide up into what is now the floor. Uh, Medric, uh, you kind of saw just how deeply embedded these were, um, and it would have been an extraordinary amount of effort and probably needed a lever in order to open these up on your own. Good, good, you hear a disembodied voice. You've done well. You've saved those souls. Did you just pull them from out of their rooms while they were sleeping, or what? Ah, that would be telling. I'll make it a point to go talk to each of these NPCs, or each of these people, once we get out of here. I like at some point this week, anyway. Playing with others this way. I, I like how you got, they got elevated to people. That's really nice. <laughs> it is my duty and honor to do such things, after all. Now, will you proceed along? There still awaits you other rooms. I'll just nod. All right. Okay. Yep. I also head towards the exit if there is one. Yep. And so the fourth room, which had nothing but a blank space behind it, uh, that door also has fallen into the floor. Who's going first? The room, the, the, the window or the hole at the back seems to be just about person sized. I'll cast light on the hammer again and use it as a flashlight and okay. walk through. It does not, does not seem to illuminate beyond this, this threshold. Okay. You step through and vanish. Who's second? 
I've been in the middle most of the time, so I'll go mm-hmm. second. Okay. Uh, and with Silas following quick behind. This time, you do not float upward, but instead seem to sink downward. Quickly at first, and then with something that crosses across your face. It's almost invisible. It's like a, 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 a whiff of, of solid air, almost, uh, that, that passes across your vision, uh, Medric, and you feel yourself caught with another one, this one on your arm. But when you look, there seems to be almost nothing. You reach out for it. It feels wispy and uh, uh, like cotton, almost. And then there's more of them, and more of them, and more of them. And I will have each of you make a dexterity saving throw, please. Actually, dexterity or strength saving throw. You can make. Your okay, can I redo that and do strength, or is that just a, sure. a shitty roll? Yeah. Is that magic or not? This is not magic. Okay. Seven. Okay. Well, let's go with the dexterity saving throw because that was a five and not a. Well, I, I guess they're both shitty. It's either a five or a six, which, whichever one you want to pick. Seventeen. Okay. Uh, that's 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 very good for you. Not so good for the other two. I need to move my eye. Pardon me. I have to find my eye and move it. This is... <laughs> there are times when I like trackballs. This is not one of them. Because it seems like I'm having to slide around. Okay. Um, if you move off to the right from there and pull down... And keep pulling down on the right-hand side. You should I'll put a little, um, little echo where the eyeball is at, and I will do that for the people at home as well. I, I just see myself in complete darkness. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I just zoomed out so I can see the whole thing. There you go. <laughs> I've placed the eye, I think, in a wall. <laughs> So all I see is this eye floating in midair. I'll move it to hopefully find a spot I can see. Uh, okay, well, I will do this manually then. Um, we can all play the, the close our eyes game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. I have to do both. I have to both reveal and I have to and I have to put the lighting on. Okay, that's interesting. I will accept this. Oh, and I discovered a bug with Roll20 today. Where if I use the scroll button on my mouse to roll down, it, it, it moves off to the right-hand side of my page for no apparent reason. Uh, and I have Annie outside the wall. Pardon me. There. You should be <laughs> able to see. As cool. you tumble down through these layers and layers of strands... Uh, you find, Medric, that you end up bound up in them, as do you as well. Uh, stop moving yourself outside the walls, play the police house. Um, uh, as you both find yourself bound by what looks to be thick, uh, th- well, layers upon layers of really, really thin gossamer white thread. But it's sticky, like spider webs. Fucking spiders. I'll see if and I can. Both, do we even have a dagger? Both of you are at the moment uh, restrained. I will produce flame from my hand. <laughs> okay. Does that have a burn the web away or just a I component? Forget. Let me check. Uh, sorry, you would be. It's not restrained. It's the next level up. You are. Oh, shoot. Bound. Let's just call it bound for now until I remember. And Annie, you you kind of managed to twist and turn in just the right way. And maybe Vice was still out. So you're able to cut away the strands as necessary and come uh, come into this area without without crashing too much. It's a I verbal am somatic. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, uh, uh, Medric? Verbal and somatic. Verbal and somatic, so you can't move your hands enough to to uh, to cast the spell. Damn, um, Annie, you do see the two of them are are kind of mummified at the moment. They're so bound up in this stuff. 
Yeah. You you also can hear the sounds of what are kind of like dozens of little tiny uh, uh, clicks and whirs from down the hallway that you can just make out to your your uh, right, uh, your left, I guess, from that perspective. Cool. Uh, I just checked. Um, what do you mean by the next one up? Because like it's grappled and then restrained. Oh, it is restrained. I was two. thinking of grappled. Yeah. Sorry. No, I was thinking okay. of grappled. Cool. So yeah, they cool. are restrained. My my brain was like, wait, what would be the third one? <laughs> no, like, sorry. Stunned? <laughs> stunned. No. Um, they're just restrained at the moment in this sticky web. I will try to break it. Okay. Uh, Straight can... up uh, athletics roll with disadvantage. May, may I try to help... Uh... Well, I guess that that's a one and not a 23. God damn it. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're finding that because of the way your arms are kind of bound up, you can't get leverage enough to break through. Uh, what did Annie want to try to do? I wanted to try to, to give the help action. Um, yeah. What's your strength? Uh, looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, 12, but I have also vice in my hand yeah with vice you can easily cut through it um you're not quite strong enough to just sort of help him tear out of it but you, i'll say that you can give him uh advantage which in this case is an even roll which is the first one uh and you are able to kind of cut in strategic places very very carefully because it's hard to tell which parts of medric are there and which parts are not just not, weaken uh, it weaken it a little bit yeah yeah in fact that's that's what it is he just weakened it. Medrick did this all by himself. Rah! <laughs> Thanks, Annie. Give it a weak point. It's it's, it's like when you like are breaking uh, like uh, you, know, you you trim it and then just snap it. Hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You get a clean cut. <laughs> um, and kind of with with the exclamation that Medrick makes, finally getting free from this. Um, the clattering grows a little bit stronger and then is adjoined by a very strange sound. A sound of a few small bells ringing. How's Silas doing? Um, tied up, I imagine. <laughs> okay, now I'll cast Produce Flame and how far away is Silas from me? Oh, just a few feet. He's just down the hallway. Okay. Produce flame and put it near the webs, but like, I'm assuming they're like hooked onto walls or anchored to walls. So I'll put it on the wall side so I don't burn Silas accidentally. <laughs> I mean, the, the, you, you were literally mummy wrapped. So it's just on the two of you at the moment. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you're able to clear away the webs. It's It singes a little bit, Silas. Uh it is the use of open flame on a very thin medium that's covering you. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, uh, not to no no damage, and you are released. Okay. And where from where Medric is, and possibly from where Annie is, you can see that there's a small hallway that leads uh, off from where you're standing, and that's where all the sound seems to be coming from. Hmm. Towards the sounds or away from the sounds. Uh, I, well, I think it's just the one tunnel. Well, there was I, I there's one to the to the east. And with your with your actually extra bit of light, um, you should be able to see Medric that this is just a, a, a hallway with two ends. There's no there's no other tunnel. Okay. Well, I guess forward it is. I just realized the, the opportunity that I missed by not having the eyeball actually be there. So the eyeball is actually there watching things. This is much more interesting to have it do that. <laughs> I can't see the map. Can you not see anything? Oh, wait, no. Never mind. I have the secondary thing I have to do. So I believe I do this. Yes. Yeah. There we go. I always get confused about uh, about how those two things work together. So you can see in front of you, in fact, um, 
scrabbling around at about uh, about a foot in, t- in tall uh, in, 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 uh, entirely is what looks to be uh, and moves kind of like a stiff-legged spider. But as it clatters and clacks along, you realize that it's made of metal and hinges um, with uh, uh, sort of an entirely metallic um, exoskeleton. It appears to be some sort of machine. Kind of regards you and then proceeds to skitter off. The mechanical spiders. I'll keep going just one and get out of the way so that my friends can follow. They don't seem to be hostile. At this point, I think we'll probably need to roll into initiative just to keep things straight. Cool. So I will bring up the initiative tracker. Uh, Give me a second to clear it first. They don't seem to be hostile. Let's roll initiative. It's like, oh no. (laughs) It's more to keep uh, it fair for everybody getting a chance to do something. Okay. Rather than everybody trying to do something at once. The other one didn't really need it as much, I think. So, and I'm just going to pick an exemplar. Let's choose that guy. Do I have time to use the washroom? Uh, that would be the better time. BRB. Do, do real quick. I'll go stir my soup while he does that. Sure. <laughs> soup stirring <laughs> it is. It is a stirring moment. She left before she heard that, didn't she? All right, that's everybody. And we'll take a moment to uh, pause here just because, uh, well, two out of three players are, are not here. Looks as though my video is moving again, though. That's that's positive. <laughs> For those of you who are watching and wondering, uh, you can see the other episodes we've done on YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Isle Master Playlist. We'll look for the uh, Campaign 2, uh, L-O-T-D-I uh, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion for episodes just in this one. This is episode 41 of this particular campaign set in the port town of Eilthvater on the island of Eskis. So. so I did a thing. Uh, I, I've realized I was like, I want to go stir this because like it, it's not like smelling like, uh, like after like an hour of, of cooking. Did you turn it on? I, I, I turned the front burner on instead of the back burner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I never use that back burner unless I'm making broth. Good soup lesson, I think. Tur- turn on the right burner. Turn on the right burner. I, I have done that. Thankfully, it didn't happen more like what I had, which is when I did that, uh, I could smell this burning. That was bad. Well, I just cleaned the stove before I was making food, so like... Awesome. There's nothing on it, (laughs) but... So, um, Annie is up first, so you might as well go ahead and and, uh, and do Um, what you're going to do. Uh, I've moved out of the way, uh, and so I see a spooter there, a spooter there, and a spooter there. Uh, yes. Make Kay. a perception check. Let me move the view here in the middle of Six. Okay. You hear them clattering in all directions. All right, I'm back. Cool. Hmm. Well, my brain sees an edge of something interesting right here. To move to uh, the one that's closer. So I'm going to I was there one, two, three. Look at what this is. Okay. Um, you see before you what looks to be a gravestone. But the gravestone is wrapped up in chains um, with a very strange-looking lock on its surface. As you bend and look towards the gravestone to see the engraving, you see a name that strikes you as familiar. 
The name is Rex. R-E-X. And if the player doesn't remember, I will remind you. Oh, it's the, 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 the Winthrop. Winthrop. Rex Winthrop, yes. Oh, no. Rex are sad. Not scared, sad. <laughs> okay. It's probably just an illusion. Hopefully. Okay. Um, do you want to try to do anything else? Um. Hmm. By the way, I it's just sort of a circumstance, but I love the way that the uh, the eyeball view that is being shown to everyone else, <laughs> the way that it happens to look at the eyeball in the middle and the little shattered things. Um, I I would love to say that that was intentional to represent uh, 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 Tao, but um, sure, it was intentional. It was totally intentional to represent Tao. <laughs> um. Is there's a lock on it? Hmm. Mm -hmm. My brain is too curious. I'm gonna try to pick it. Actually, I'm gonna roll uh, wisdom. Yeah, I'm gonna try to pick it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and make your pickpocketing roll. A thief's tool roll. Thief's tool roll. Tools nine plus nine is eighteen, I believe. 18? Yeah. Um, as you kind of lean down at it and start to pick at the lock, you're thinking, this it's a strange shaped lock. It's kind of octagonal, but it doesn't look like it's that complicated. And you pull out your thieves' tools and start working it. And just as you feel like you've got it, you notice the lock shift and change. It's now triangular, entirely different than the lock. Hmm. One who has a magical lock that does something similar with its gears, I'm gonna leave it. Okay. I know how complicated those locks get. I, I, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, unless I see a need to later on. Okay. Silas, you've seen Annie kind of creep off into the darkness. You've seen these things kind of half seen skittering about. Well, let me see. This doesn't look are. like it's a friendly place. Make a perception check, please. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. Um, as you're kind of looking around, and with the darkness kind of spread around you, although you see a little bit um, due to the light that that Medrick gives off. Um, the sound of this ringing bell sounds relatively clear to you. Uh, and it seems to be coming from, uh, oops, wrong mouse. Seems to be coming from this direction. Okay. Well, I guess I'll go that direction. Okay. I encounter a spider. And you do. You encounter a, a, Looks like a copper spider that's somewhat uh, uh, greened with age. Uh, and as you move closer, it kind of shuffles back and forth. Seems somewhat wary of you. Uh, but you can see that around its uh, neck, right behind its head, it seems to be bearing some sort of uh, golden uh, ring. At the bottom of the ring is a small bell. And as you look at the bell, you notice that the ringer in the bell seems oddly shaped. It is not round or smooth, but seems to be craggy. Maybe the bells are the worn adventurers so they don't get eaten. Hmm. Kind of like a cat bell. Well, I'm going to try to touch the spider, the copper spider, and see what it does. Okay. You, you're going to poke it? Mm-hmm. You're going to poke it. All right. I just got to realized I didn't bring that up for some I switched computers in the middle of all this and went oh <laughs> you gotta actually switch all the things not just okay um, hello all right there uh, 
uh, as it will, well, it moves its mandibles as if to bite you when you move towards it. Okay. Um, but I don't think an eight hits. Nope. Sorry, an 11 doesn't hit. Nope. Um, as it reaches out towards you and tries to uh, to bite at you. Uh, when you okay, I pull my hand back and tell people it tried to bite me, but is it continuing to come after me or? Nope, it seemed more like a warning. Don't come near me. And the bell, little bell rings. You can hear, all of you can hear that. And the little bell ringing is answered by other bells somewhere in the darkness. Well, um, I guess I'm going to charge up the staff and then use my action to go defensively in case something attacks me. I can't really go any further, so okay, that's it for me. Uh, let's see them. Let me zoom in a little bit here. As you start to hear them moving around and chittering in the darkness. Um, the one that's in front of you moves away, but you are within range. You could strike at it if you wish. I think you were muted, but I think I heard you from the other room. Mm -hmm. No attacking. Okay. Um, and all of you hear, the, uh, hear numerous ones moving in your direction. Cool, 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 cool. Medric, you see one kind of crawling along the floor in your direction as well. It's your turn. Oh, I see it. Well, it, Silas said it tried to bite him, but not until he tried touching it. So I'll just walk by it, keeping an eye on it. Okay. It seems to be observing you, but nothing else. And Just make a perception check is. from there. All right. And that's, do I only have like a 30 feet? Um, so I'm at my 30 feet now. Uh, you have your movement, whatever your movement is. Okay. Perceive 10. <laughs> okay. There's a thing, it's red. You do see uh, in front of you another gravestone. You can't make out the the name written on it. Similar to what Andy described, it also seems to be crisscrossed with um, with uh, chains with a strange lock at its center. Uh, and you do hear another bell ringing, but you're not sure where it came from. There's another gravestone over here. I can't quite make out the name. Did Silas mention the weird bell? Not yet, no. I didn't think to. Okay. Yep. He's still looking at where the spider went. Because but... I, the player, have an idea, but also if Annie doesn't know this information. Okay. Anything so. else, Medric, that you're going to do? That perception roll was really just as you were passing by, but you can still take okay. an active action if you want. And you said I hear a bell, like more bells coming from you're not sure the right, the left. Or... Okay. You didn't roll high enough to find out. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I'll take a look at it, a closer look. Okay. As you peer forward, a familiar name is written on this gravestone as well. Sable. Oh, no. And if the player doesn't remember, all the players should know, um, but the folks at home might not remember uh, Sable Harquin that is the daughter of the Baron well that'll put it into well, the party real fast one of the daughters of the Baron yeah hey Silas do you think they're communicating with these bell sounds like you're the mm, possibly are they calling for backup and then are they going to attack us Who knows? I have no I idea. don't like this place So yeah, that was a mention of the bells anyway. Okay. Annie? Mention of the bells isn't the information Annie needs to move forward with this. Um, what does she need? 
<laughs> she needs the visual description that Silas got. Oh, okay. Yeah, and she can't see it right it's... now because she's right behind a wall as well from where they are. Yep. Um, she's gonna say like, I don't think I can pick these locks. They change when I try. Gotta be a key somewhere, probably. I bet you it's on a spider. There's a spider here that has a weird bell. Uh, there. Or th there's a spider there. Does this one have a bell? Are you going to look closer? Yeah. Um, you do not see a bell around its neck. Cool. Uh, I'll move back towards. Okay. Cool. Uh, back towards here and the one with the bell, basically. Okay. Um, you can make a perception check. If hearing matters in any of these perception checks, I don't think any of you have, especially with hearing, but if it did, that would give you, that would apply. Teen. Something teen? 15. 15? Um, you can hear the, the bells ringing, and you can definitely hear the bell coming from this direction. It's not the only bell you hear. In fact, you're pretty sure you heard a couple more, but um, that one definitely, you know, is close by. Cool. I'll then, uh, that was just to count my spaces here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will go there, there, and I believe that's 30. Yep. Cool. And now you can see in front of you a, a, uh, copper green colored, um, uh, mechanical spider and again you see this golden band around its neck leading to a bell with a rather strange shaped ringer mm. all right well that was an active perception check so i believe that is my turn um yep okay uh silas uh just to confirm yeah i have nothing useful for Uh, I believe it's Silas's turn. Okay. Silas takes a step forward and finds spiders and a blue thing. Yes, the blue thing is, again, I just happen to have these markers on hand. Uh, it represents a gravestone, which you see bound uh, in chains. That's the one that's labeled Rex. Well, I will head over. Actually, I don't think I can move any further, so I will look over at the spider that was greenish. Okay. And if it's the one that had the the weird bell, then I'll announce yes. that. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure really what to do, but... I, I think the, the inside part of the bell is a key. Hmm. How's the bell hanging on there? There's a uh, golden clasp around the back of its neck and then a small hook on the bottom. Or actually an eye, like a, a round uh, enclosure, clasp, whatever. Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, I can try to get it, but it might make them attack us. And if one of them attacks us, are they all going to attack us? And I'll bring my Probably. shield up and ha have the hammer at the ready. I'll go over to the spider and say, uh, just, hey, can I have that bell? Doesn't appear to be a response. Hmm. Oh, yeah, and I would see yeah. that there's another tombstone there as well. So I would say that there there's another one there. So there might be a third yeah, bell I'll spider. Yeah. I'll say you notice it, but you haven't had a chance to really take a look at it, and it's kind of around the corner as well. Yep. But I, I would make that known that there's a third one. Okay. Well, 
This is something intended to scare us. So I'm pretty sure these things are going to attack us. Uh, I'm going to whack the spider and try to get the key off of it. Okay. Are you trying to hurt the, the spider or just trying to essentially disarm it of the key or, or bell or whatever? I'll try to knock the key free if I can. Okay. Want me to hold it? I can hold the spider. I mean, how big is it? Uh, these are all about the size of a dinner plate. Oh, yeah, we can totally hold those. Oh, if they're, if they're that small, I'm just going to try and pick it up and take the key off it. Okay. Um, or have you pick it up, and, or somebody pick it up and somebody else take the key off it. <laughs> well, for the moment, um, you reach down towards it. Uh, no, for the moment, yeah, I pick it up, I suppose, because that attacks action. you. Oh, wow, that's a crit hit. That's a okay. wicked hit, actually. Um, so that's a uh, 17 damage piercing. So it automatically uh, hits? Uh, well, sorry, I got a crit of 25. I, I assumed that. Okay. Um, okay, that's half my health gun. Yeah, as it, as it stabs out towards you. Um, you don't have to worry about the poison save, but you kind of feel like it, it let go of some poison. It just sort of dribbles over your hand. Watch out, they're poisonous. Great. Also, it just about cut my hand off. Mm, that's my turn, I guess. Um, oh, you can make your uh, uh, attack on it, essentially, to grab it if you want. Uh, sure. Uh, I guess that's... I guess that's an athletics roll. Yeah, I could say acrobatics as well because you're kind of trying to do this, you know, in a bouncy way. It depends on what you have. Doesn't matter all that much. No. Nope. Yeah, un unfortunately, the 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 sharp attack kind of threw off your aim, and, and it uh, it kind of skitters out, out of your reach. Yep, that's it. Okay, um, their turn. Uh, it is once again going to retreat. It is moving out of your attack range, so you could try to. Uh, hit it if you want. Hmm. Sure. Uh, that is twenty-four to hit. Definitely a strike. Uh, does not do any of the extra damages. Uh, just the nine bludgeoning. Okay, very solid hit as it. Uh, you see several of its of its of its uh, mechanical legs kind of break off, and the bell rings loudly. Uh, as you see uh, a number of the other spiders starting to surround around you uh, and moving closer. Uh, this one's skittering over the edge of the the tomb. Two of them are within range and are going to uh, attempt to hit you. Mm -hmm. uh, whoops, wrong button. that one uh, and it attempts to attack one of them uh, it only does one point of piercing damage I don't have a proper character sheet for this but it does a 19 hit uh, who's it attacking uh, you uh, yep okay one point of piercing again I don't have a, a sheet for that and a crit <laughs> but that's only uh, two points uh, sure. As you see, the two of them kind of crawling over and and uh, uh, skittering in your direction. You can also hear there's others that are kind of on their way to you. Uh, and the rest of you kind of hear as that frantic bell was ringing, uh, spiders moving around you and kind of moving off in that direction. That's Let's not good. Let's see. That's that one. Uh, that one moves to there. Yeah, they're definitely attacking me. Um, it is Medric's turn. And they're poisonous. Watch out for that. Uh, the one with the key, is that like the one that's directly north of you? Um. Uh, no. You couldn't see it from there anyway. There's two walls yep. in your way. Because there's Four. a wall here and a wall here. Okay, 
you see a couple of sp of the mechanical spiders that are kind of uh, crawling up over things. One of them has crawled up over this gravestone, and they're both kind of uh, cornering Silas, whose hand right. looks kind of bloody and rough. So the one that's in front of me, directly south, I'm going to swing the hammer at that one. Okay. Ha! 23. That's a hit. Nine damage. Nine damage. Um, it it uh, kind of rolls up into a clump, and you can see that uh, uh, most of its legs have been broken off. Its its spine is a bit bent, but it still seems to be functioning. And I'll cast spiritual weapon. Right. Uh, okay. Right here. This. How do I do this? Uh, I've got the icon here. I'm going to put it on. I mean... Uh, oh, just indicating? Uh, just yeah. uh, press and hold. There. Okay. And let's see. This should still be controlled by you. So you should have uh, control over that now. I don't know why... And it's going to swing at the spider oh. south of it. Okay. 19. That's a hit. Four. Okay. Uh, it manages to to uh, to mess it up and bend a couple of limbs, but doesn't seem to be bothering it too much. Uh, that is Medric's turn. Yep. Annie. May I try to pickpocket the bell from the spider basically using um, sleight of hand you can certainly try do you say anything or do anything uh, how how is she approaching this um she's just going to like i didn't cuz there's this i didn't hear anything after she's going to like She's, she's just going to like try to yoink it. Okay. So she's kind of like, eh, 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 whoop, dash, <laughs> letting hands in. What was the roll? Uh, that was a natural 15, so 21. <laughs> nice. As you kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, reach in very lightning fast, uh, grab your fingers around this rough, uh, something you can identify very quickly as a key in the middle, give it a yank, and it pops off in your hand. And the thing in front of you deactivates Ooh. Um, as you look at the key uh, the key has a number on it uh, that has the number three on it okay that was your action you still have bonus and uh, movement well, I am going to see what name is on this one here. Okay. As you look closer, you recognize the name Angus written across it. Mm, old guy from Lighthouse, right? Angus Frey. Yep. Okay. Um, Silas. Move towards Silas more than. Okay. So. I'll move. Da, 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 25. There we go. Okay. Okay. Well, uh. Yeah, Silas was beat on whichever one Frederick was beating on. All right. Oh, yeah. And I'll say I took, I took the key and it stopped. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, he's got a booming blade, this one. All right. Uh, eight, unfortunately, misses. Oh. Yep. That's it for me. Okay. Uh, let's see, their turn. Uh, 
uh, this one moves up from behind you. Uh, this one. This one will try to attack the the uh, the blade. Uh, this one moves here. They don't move very fast. Uh, and this one is going to move over here. So two of them are going to try to attack uh, Silas. Uh, first one, seventeen to hit. Uh, he's going to use the shield's reaction to negate it. Okay. Add two to it, AC. And the other one uh, goes for a thirteen that misses. Okay. Uh, one is going to attack uh, Medric. Seven misses. Yeah. And one attacks the uh, spiritual weapon, and it has no effect. Uh, that's it for their turn, Medric. I'll keep pounding on the one that's directly south of me. Okay. Uh, yeah, twenty-four. Definite hit. I don't think you can do low enough damage. <laughs> Crunch. Six. As it bends and breaks into a small little pile of metal parts. And the spiritual weapon will attack the one directly south of it. Okay. 17. Definite hit. Seven damage. Exactly enough. So that one also goes crunch. And I'll move the spiritual weapon. Eh, I can't see the map. Then you can't I'll move the spiritual it. weapon there. <laughs> I'll move it here then. Okay. Actually, no, here. Okay. Uh, that is Medric Annie. Hello. Uh, Hello. I am going to... I see another one of the bell spiders over here. Uh, if you can, yeah, if you can make that out. Yeah. So, go to here, and once again, try to yoink. Okay. Uh, that is a 16. Uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, that is... That is enough. Cool. So nice. once more, you've managed to grab onto a, uh, a spider. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, that one I'm is... Sick. And here we are, like, just grabbing all the aggro. <laughs> uh, I will tell you that it's a strategy. Uh, this key has the number four on its side. Okay. And, and yes, it, that, wants, it that also was... falls to pieces. I'm just going to... Uh, da, 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 that's 20. Hmm. I will... Here. A bit more central. Okay. Um, and do I hear any more bells? Um, at this moment, you do not. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Silas, looks like they are surrounding you, and then as you watch, they seem to be uninterested. Mm. Okay. I will slowly back away around here to try to find the one, and oh, it's already been taken care of. Yeah, you see it sort of, it's, it's not been crushed, it's more like it just sort of fell apart. Okay. Well, I guess I get to about there. Okay. And you can see that this one, too, is also kind of aimlessly moving. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, any action or held action? Nope. Okay. Uh, their turn. And they start to sort of drift around. All right, Annie. Hey. Um, and they both I have my turn. Up. Oh, wait, sorry, did I? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, the one in front of me, did that, did that one have a key? No. Okay. Did not appear to. What was the little R next to it? Hmm? 
there's like a little letter R next to it. Yep, that's actually on the thing it's on top of. Okay. Which is the gravestone which says Rex on it. Okay, okay, gotcha. There's a big pile of things going on there. Um, Should we keep killing them? Yeah. We probably just need the keys. Yeah. Also, there are three tombstones, and we found four keys, and they have numbers three and four, so. You found two keys. Oh, yeah. We, we found two keys, <laughs> but they have numbers three and four, so. I'll look at the ones that are near me. Okay. They also have uh, these these tiny uh, little uh, tan colored ones, not the the uh, greenish ta uh, tarnished copper color of the others, and they do not seem to have any bells around them or probably no keys. How far forward does that go? And I'm pointing towards the east side. Um, you're pointing like in this direction. Yeah. You're not really sure. You literally only stopped about there. But you could see that there was a bit more on beyond that. All right, I'll dash towards that direction then. Okay. Wait, let me count. One, two, three, four, five. And there is a, a wall that starts five. here. Okay. All right. Six. You do see a spider there, but you don't see anything else. All right. Um, that was your turn in action. Um, Annie? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out where to move. <laughs> okay. Fuck, I lost count. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you pick up your token and then press Q, it'll make a nice little line as you're going. Oh, okay. Press Q. I, I don't see the line. So once you pick up your token, press yeah. Q, and then, and then it'll move. make a oh. yellow. Yeah, and then move. Q again, it'll make a turn. Um, alternatively, from your icon, you can hit X and start uh, a. Or actually, I think it's just from. Oh, never mind. I'm just getting confusing now. Yeah, Q is the best yeah, trick. <laughs> Okay, so you've moved. Whoa. Yeah, sixty feet. Because I was dashing. <laughs> and now I got to bring the spiritual weapon. Can you like? Can you like? Uh, shift the spiritual weapon for sure. Tiles towards where I went. <laughs> and Medric disappears in the darkness. Okay. Uh, and you do see in front of you another one of the gravestones. And I will say that you see a name which may not be familiar to you, Oleon. O L I O N. Also, o L I O N. Uh, and you do also see another greenish looking spider over in this direction. There's one more here. That makes sense with the number four then. Okay. Um now it's Annie's turn. Hello. Um <laughs> I am going to uh, move to here, and I'd like to see if there's a number on the lock. Okay. You lean forward, and you do not see a number on the lock. It seems mm -hmm. more or less smooth and featureless, although some of them do have some features. This one seems smooth and featureless. Hmm. Okay. And that was... I was here, uh, so it's 15 feet. Uh, da, 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 da. I will go to then. Okay. Um, and you can see, as I mentioned before, there is a another one of the green ones, tarnished copper, as well as the gravestone that uh, Medric is in front of. You can't read it from where you are, though. Silas. I think you're muted at the moment if you're saying anything. Mm hmm. Okay. 
Okay, that's about as far as I can go. Okay. And you can see that one beside you, the tombstone says Angus. Mm -hmm. See another spider behind you. Once again, the spiders move about somewhat aimlessly. Um, okay. Um, Annie. Sorry, Medrick. I almost did it again. I corrected myself. Mm -hmm. I'll look at any smash it, or do you want? Or do you want to try grabbing the key again? I mean, I can try grabbing it again. It's been working. All right. So I'll ready an action. I'll lift the hammer up, and if any gets bit, the hammer's coming down on the spider. Okay. So the hammer raised, Annie. Actually, no. Wait. Can I can I, can I take that back? Sure. What do you want to do? I'll go towards Annie. You got this. Give her guidance. <laughs> and then uh, I'll, I, hold, I, I'll hold my I believe action. guidance is an action. Is it always oh, a crap, bonus action? Um, no, it's an action. Crap. Okay. So you wouldn't be able to hold the hammer. All right, I'll give her guidance. Okay. Cool, cool, right. cool. Uh, Annie, you're up. Oh, and I'll move the uh, spiritual weapon. That way, for more slots. Sure, you should be able to move that. Or can I you can't see it? it. Okay. There. It's out of vision. Yeah. Um. Uh, technically, you have to keep it within your vision to use it. So keep that in mind. Okay. I will move there, and okay. I will once again try to yoink it. Ninja. Right. Yoinking's been going very well for you so far. And now it's a guided yoink. Uh, well, the guided the guided yank helps because uh, that b brings that to uh, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, that, that guidance <laughs> definitely helps. As once again, roll, roll the four on the guidance. <laughs> that was that was yeah, nice. that was a lot closer. Um, as once again, you yoink that from underneath its chin, and I can't mark it as dead because limitations of roll twenty. Just assume it's dead. Uh, this one, although I have to figure out which one that is. Uh, okay. And from here, can I see the name? Uh, just a second. That one has number two on the key. Okay. And yes, you can make out the name Oleon. I will have you make in, let's see, Charisma Saving Throw. That is a natural one. Oh no. Doesn't ring a bell. It sounds like it feels like it should, but you're just not able to remember. Tip of your tongue kind of moment. Silence. I the player I'm also having that. So <laughs> it's fair. I, I, I kind of chose that one on purpose. Um, Silas. Okay. Oh look. Everybody's up here. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> And Annie is holding three keys. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I really don't have anything. Uh, and you see the 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 gray beside you as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get no ideas. He'll just wander off and try to find the uh, wherever the other key is. Okay. Um, you can hold an action if you want, or you can, yeah, that's about it actually at the moment. Yeah, I get nothing. Okay. Um, they're going to move and once again, kind of moving without any real purpose at the moment. Uh, Medric. I'll also continue to move. Okay. Oops. Where are you headed to? Just here. I'll move the spiritual oh. weapon closer to me. I can actually see it now. Okay. Um, make a perception check at disadvantage. Fifteen. Fifteen? You hear the yep. faint sound of a bell ringing somewhere off, uh, well, from your perspective, the direction of the eye. That's the general direction, not necessarily okay. distance. 
I hear a bell, you guys. It's near the center of the room. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, Annie? Um, well, I will then go towards the center of the room. Okay. And as you round that corner, you can see uh, just barely, I believe, you can make out. Actually, no, from where you are, you probably can make it out fairly easily. Uh, right a there. Fourth, a fourth green spider, yes. Cool, cool. I would like to bonus action dash. Okay. Gonna attempt a yoink. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's bonus action. So you actually still have an action left. Sure. Nice. Yep. 13 on the dice plus 6, so 19. <laughs> and he's like MVP in this room. Uh, that's 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 impressive. That really is. Uh, as it falls apart, uh, you have the fourth key, and predictably enough, uh, it is numbered uh, number one. Uh, now I believe it is a trial and error of uh, which key goes to which grave. Is there anything on the locks? Nothing on the locks. You hear Annie call out to uh, Silas that uh, she's gotten four keys. She's found four locks. Uh, sure. I will start with Sable because it's right there. And I'm going to try number two to start. Okay. Um, as you try the lock it goes in but does not turn you yeah. hear the clattering from across the room as all the spiders seem to be interested now cool um wait why are you trying something it's silas's turn oh sorry <laughs> i other than move, trying to figure out where she is silas doesn't really have anything Okay, you can see her now pretty easily, and you could hear her call out from the other side of the room. Okay. That's about as far as you can go. Okay. You can discuss things if things are, are of interest. Um, um, I don't have any idea of, like, where what key goes, but four keys, four graves, one of them thing. Mm-hmm. So who okay. did we meet first out of these people? And who's Olion? 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 The name rings a bell, but I can't figure it out. Tip of my tongue. So to speed things along here, uh, what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is um, you can make attempts. And if it's correct, fine, move on. If it's not, I'll make an attack on each of you with the remaining spiders. Okay. Cool. So you can choose which one you want to try first. Um, you kind, you I'm going have, to. You kind of have a bonus one because you know that two doesn't work for Sable, yeah. but that's okay. In the interest of time, because I'm running it out of it myself. In interest of time, I'm going to go from now on. Basically, I'm in front of Sable. I'll do one, two, three, four, each one, and try that way. Okay. Uh, one doesn't work. So we will do a attack on each of you for that one. Basically, the spiders are coming out now, and they are, are, are swarming over the entire room. Uh, rather than trying to move them all, it's, it's easier to do this way. So for uh, Annie, first attack is 19. Um, hits, I will uh, reaction a dodge. Okay, it's only one point, so it doesn't oh, okay. make a difference in this case. Uh, second one against uh, Silas, 18. Uh, one uh, yeah, I'll react with the shield for... Okay. 19, so it misses. So are any of these ones poisoned? No. Okay. Uh, and five misses uh, Medric. What's your next yep. try? And if someone else wants to suggest a number or you just want to run through them all real quick, you can do that as well. I have no idea what numbers would be preferential, so we might okay. as well just keep trying a different one on that one. So you try number three. Number yep. three does not work. 
Uh, well, now we know it's number four. <laughs> attack on on uh, on Annie is a twelve to hit. Uh, I'll just call out the numbers, and you can you can mark down the one point of damage, or if you want to react, uh, then we can call it out. Uh, Thirteen against Silas, I think misses. Uh, Sixteen against uh, uh, Medric, misses. Okay, uh, and then you try four in the lock, and four fits, and it turns. The chains dissolve across the the uh, side of it. The stone becomes uh, uh, clean and marble-like. Um, and solid and more certain. But number four seems to work. Okay. Uh, I then go to... Uh, and you can you can pass out the keys and people can do multiples at the same time if they want to, or... Yeah, that, that works too. I can... Who, who wants what, what key? I'll... Grab number one, someone grab number two, someone grab number three, basically. Sure. All right, I'll grab one. I think we should try. I, I like the idea of order we met people in, so maybe try number one on Rex and then number two on Angus, but that means we we met Oleon, and I can't remember this name. We met Sable last, so the one we met before Sable was Angus, most likely. Yes, but where does Oleon fit in is my question. Well, it could be number one. Maybe somebody yeah. from your past. I grab number two and go for whatever one's closest to me. Cool. Okay. Um, probably with no obstructions, the one Rex is closer. Uh, to try number two on Rex. Sure. It does not work. Uh, once again, a round of attacks. Starting with uh, Silas, because that was the one that attacked. Uh, did that click? It looks like the same one as last time. 16? Uh, 16 wouldn't hit. Okay. Uh, against Annie, uh, 22. Hit. One point. Uh, and nine against Medrick, which would miss. Nope. Okay, you try. You guys try your ones, because cool, I I'll... assume we were all trying these at the same time. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll give Medric number three, and I'll run to the Oleon grave and try number one. I'll try number three on the Angus grave. Okay. Uh, okay. Neither are successful. Okay, so, so three is not. Of attack. Um, well, we were all trying these at the same time. It'll be one attack on each of you then. Because um, there's well, there's we already had that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. That's all I meant. Okay. Cool. So number three is not Angus. Number one is not Oleon. Um, given that uh, your characters are, uh, you know, embedded in the world more than you, uh, how about we have each of you make an appropriate intelligence-based skill roll, and I'll let you choose <laughs> which one makes sense. History. Sure. No investigation with all our good. Nice. Natural 20, 23. Uh, 16. Religion. It's the only one uh, that's not a negative. Yeah, I don't hey, know if religion is. Oh, actually, sure. Why not? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So it's great. Um, what up? <laughs> so yeah. Sable was the, is the youngest and her key was number four. Oh, uh, that works. Oh. So between the three of you kind of talking it about, you kind of think about this idea about if it's an order, what does the order mean? And Sable was the youngest and then would be the last to die. Right, right. Um, okay. So first to die would be probably and, Rex. Bunch and of actually, for, for the history roll that you made again, Annie, I will give you uh, Oleon. It's not a name he uses very much. And you get the impression he prefers to be called Captain Verendel. Oh. Okay, so Rex number... Wait. Wait, but if Verendel's an elf, Sorry. doesn't he live longer than Sable? He's not an elf. He's a half elf. Okay. Half elf. But still, he'd live longer than Sable. <laughs> anyway, technicality. And actually, as as Medric comes to that conclusion, 
there is a little bit of an almost uh, frisson of of uh, of worry that crosses your mind because if this is say a predictor of when they're going to die then Verendel is not going to live longer than Sable. And uh, you also remember that this room was called the Doom of Uncertainty. Well, I have key number one, so I'm going to tell Medrick with key number three to go to Oleon. Okay. And I will go to number one with or Rax and Angus, try number two. Sure. Okay. And as you line up, and probably like you did in the other room, give a countdown, three, two, one, and in inject your keys, they all open. If, and you kind of think about it, if it was based on age, two things are a little bit confusing here. Rex was not that old. Angus was very, very old. But then you remember that after the encounter with the ghost, Rex aged a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. And makes him the oldest of the four. Um, all four of the chains dissolve. And the... Uh, sorry, my cursor just went weird on my Mac. So which one was one and which one was two again? Uh, one was Rex, two was Angus, then Oleon, and then Sable. Um, and I... My... Sorry, I'm I'm literally unable to move my cursor. There we go. Or it's it's locked into. Sorry, having a weird technical issue. Uh, each of those stones, in turn, or, or each of those gravestones, in turn, turns to a, a form of uh, of of uh, granite, of beautiful polished granite. The names all form on them in in gold, uh, and then uh, openings appear in front of them, as though the the ground itself is sinking. And the gravestones uh, reveal empty graves. Seems like your way out. Do you choose one, any though? particular one to go through? Do you all go through the same one? I'm assuming we'd be all we'd all be going through the same one. I'll just go through whichever one is bigger because Medrick is big. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. That's actually Rex's. Rex's would be the largest. All right. He's a big man. He's a big man. All right, cool. you hop in. As you as you see uh, 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 Medrick jump into the dirt and his feet kind of touch the bottom dirt and sink in through it, and, and then the dirt kind of closes over him in, in the end. And then each of you follow in turn. Uh, this time the movement is rocky. It's like you're feeling every single little stone and crag along the way. And eventually you start noticing uh, these little purple shards in the rooms around you. And that will dump you into another room. Um, I'll, I'll do a very quick description. It is an oblong room where you see from the very uh, floor of it seems to be this glow of purple as thousands of small purple stones seem embedded in the floor. Um, it seems familiar, in fact. Uh, very Catherine familiar. Like. It is Catherine's room to the details except for two exceptions. Well, actually, not, not two exceptions, only one. Um, first of all, you do see at the far end the altar where Catherine sits, and you see three vertical um, crystalline stones uh, that are kind of stood up in the passageway, kind of about equidistant. Within each of them, you see a humanoid form, and as you step closer and look into them, uh, the one on the left is very recognizable to... Um, to Silas. It is the unmoving, still beautiful as the day you last saw her, vision of Molly. In the middle one, Medric, you see a familiar squat figure. Not burning, but you feel like she should. The flame keeper, Tidewell. And in the third, a figure that is unfamiliar to you. It looks like uh, a man that you're not sure if you could really pick out, wearing a guard's uniform and a heavy helmet and holding on to a, a spear. Um, and from the other end, you, ha you hear Catherine's rumbling voice. I have been watching and waiting. 
I have been learning and understanding. You have not been completing what I asked of you. You have let the dead overcome you. And she hops off the stone, starts walking towards the three pillars. Perhaps the only way to move you forward is to destroy your past. And that's where we'll pick up next week. Uh, Cass run is uh, disappoint. I have a particular timing issue myself of something I need to get done. Uh, and also some weird technical issues which are driving me nuts at the moment. So I'm trying to ignore them uh, and complete. But I want to thank uh, my crew for going through this weird haunted house so far. Uh, you've done very well at this this kind of bizarre uh, metaphysical uh, <laughs> thing. A weird idea I had one night and went, oh, I could do that. Um, if you want to see more of what's happening or if you want to see what's already happened in the past, you can check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. You can find uh, new episodes there. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Dials uh, playlist or the LOTDI Campaign 2, The Great Confusion for this one in particular. I think also Legends of Omatia has everything. You can also find us uh, on Facebook. Uh, look for Watchers of the Drowned Isles. We post these summaries there from previous episodes as well. It's an opportunity to chat, and we'd love to chat. And if you're watching this on, on uh, that or you're looking and reading up that, that uh, summary, you can check us out live on Sunday, Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock Atlantic time on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. Thanks again to my players. Uh, enjoy the soup, Marie. Uh, enjoy yes. uh, the rest of the day, I think, lawn mowing. <laughs> yeah for for an axe and uh enjoy your afternoon uh, silas slash pat uh see you guys next week see ya, see ya.